Psalms 119 verses 121 to 128. I separation and deliverance in the, of the word. I have done judgment and justice. And that's what you are to do in your life. You are to judge things. You are to judge what are what is right and what is wrong. What is holy and what is not holy. And justice. You are to apply in your life. <coughs> excuse me. You are to apply in your life the, the, the sentence of what you are to do. You are when you do when you do what you're not supposed to do. You're to find yourself guilty before God and plead the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And few too often are we found innocent in justice. For all have sinned come the short of glory of God. Even what is good of us, for there is none good, no, not one. It's Christ in us that does good. It's the love of God in us that shows love to the brethren. We are to judge our sins. And we are to apply judges, judge, justice to ourselves. In prayer and repentance. Better have you look at your life now and find yourself guilty now. Then find yourself before the judge at the, at the white, at, uh, not the great white, but at the judgment seat of Christ. And that judge, the Lord Jesus, find you guilty and apply justice then. And that justice will be ashes and no reward. See, if you find yourself in judgment today... <coughs> And you, apply, and you apply the justice in your life today and find yourself guilty and do the sentence of, the, of what Jesus has done for us to pay for our sins. And as 1 John 1, 9 says, God will not forget, God will not ever bring it up, God will never remember it. It won't show up at the judgment seat of Christ if you judge it now. What you put under the blood now of your justice through Christ will not be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. But if you don't judge your life and you don't look at the sin in your life and you don't find yourself guilty, Christ will find you guilty. And then when you put it under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are delivered. Leave me not to my own Oppressors, people who, who oppress you. Don't let me have anything to do with them. Don't don't hand me over to them. For David would have been handed over to King Saul. For Joseph would have been his brothers. For Jesus, it would have been the, the priests and the Sadducees and the, and the scribes. For Paul, it would have been the Jews. And that's a safe prayer for God to, to keep the oppressors away from you. Be surety like a bail for thy servant for good. Lord, take care of me. I'm your servant. I need bail because I'm guilty. I have found myself guilty of judgment. And Lord, only you can pay that bail. The precious blood of Lord Jesus Christ, which Acts 20:28 20, says is the blood of God. And when you find yourself guilty, there's only one payment to set you free. And that's what a bail is. And also the word surety, if you look in the 1828 dictionary, it means for sure, 
a foundation. Well, Christ is our foundation that no other man should, that nothing else should be built upon, Paul says. It is something that is sure, and that's Christ. It's solid. Surety here in this verse, if you were to look up the dictionary yourself and look at each of the definitions of the 1828 Webster's Dictionary, and you'll see Christ. And you should see Christ in your justice. Because there is no merit you can do. Not of works, at least any man should boast. You can't walk up and pay the judge money like a bail's bond today. And when you go to a bailsman, that, that's not your money. And when you go to Christ, that's not your blood. It's your sins. It is your crime. But it's somebody else paying for, for your fee. Christ. Let not the proud oppress me. Well, we have another oppressor, the proud. Pride is never of God. Pride should never be a Christian. And what is pride here of the oppressed? They'll put you down for something they don't do. Because in their pride, they're not going to humble themselves and do right. They're not going to knock on someone's door. They're not going to hand somebody a gospel track. They're not going to preach on the street. They're not going to because in their pride, I would not step so low. I'll just let my light shine. It's used as an excuse. And you got to watch out for those that are in pride because they'll try to shut you up, shut you down, and close you up. They bring, they bring you to their level of not doing anything. My eyes fail for thy salvation. It's a longing, a desire. Life is so short, but yet it's so long. You say, well, what do you mean by that? I'm 45, 46 years old right now. And what is 46 years compared to life since around 33 and a half A.D.? What is that on a timeline? It's a speck. More of a speck if you go all the way back to when Adam was created. What is 46 years? That's a really speck. My life is short now compared to the time frame of what time has been since. And yet... How many years have Christ said, I will come, and we long for him, and we look for him, and yet God has his time frame, but oh, we long. <coughs> I want my salvation. My salvation is thy salvation. The salvation I got is the Lord Jesus Christ, and boy, do I want him. My life verse is Titus 2.13, the blessed hope and the coming of our great God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Psalms uh, 119, 123, the verse that, that counters that, that goes with that, that goes hand in hand is Titus 2.13. And for the word of thy righteousness. Now, 
If you don't see the Lord Jesus Christ in that second part, you don't read your Bible. You don't see Titus 2.13. 1 John says the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. John 1.1 1, 1 says, and the Word was with God, the Word was God. And it says in John 1, the Word became flesh. My eyes fail for thy salvation and for the Word, and that means with, hand in hand. I have a dog. It is black and white. It doesn't mean I have a black dog and I have a white dog. That means I have a dog that is black and is white. My eyes fail for thy salvation and with the word of thy righteousness. Thy salvation and the word of righteousness is the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and what do you read that in in Titus 2.13? Our great God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, if you're a Jehovah Witness, you read, all right, here's God number one, and here's Jesus Christ number two. There is, there is the white dog, and then there's, there's a black dog. No, that's not what that and is. That and is the white and the black dog is the same dog. God and Jesus Christ is the same. And that's how you can read and two ways. I got a mom and dad. Okay, yeah, that's a that's a female and that's a female and a male counterpart. But if I said if you go to this guy, he's he, um, he's Polish and Italian. Well, he's not two guys. He's one. And you go so you can say he's Polish and Italian and German, and you can go on and Scottish and, and uh, you know that doesn't make them three, four, or five different people. So Psalms one nineteen one twenty three is the Lord Jesus Christ as salvation as the Word. Titus two thirteen is God. How's that? You know, I was told if you can't find Jesus Christ in the chapter you're reading, you need to go back and reread it. And some say if you can't find Jesus Christ in a, in a verse, well, there he is in 123. 123. In Psalms 119, the longest chapter, about only about the word. Deal with thy servant according unto thy mercy. Deal with thy servant according unto man's mercy. What's man's mercy? Ballistic missiles, arrows, guns, a baseball bat, a knife, hypodermic needles, illegal drugs. Common oxide. If you were to write down all the ways that man can kill man, how great will that list be? Then, then, then you get yourself some more paper. If you could write down how many th ways man can not kill man, but make him suffer, how great will that list be? It says, thy mercy, God's mercy. Uh, David says, let me fall in the hands of the Lord, for his, her, he is merciful. Let me not fall in the hands of man, for he is cruel. Man doesn't know what mercy is. Satan does not know what mercy is. The only one you should turn to for mercy is God. And even if man was merciful, how long can man's mercy last? Let's say you go up to a king, and you desire mercy of that king, and he grants you in his kingdom mercy. How long can that mercy last until he dies and someone else 
is put on the throne. And then things may change. But yet God is always on the throne and he's never going to die. And no one's going to ever usurp his authority. So God's mercy is greater and forever. And teach me thy statutes. And again, Jesus says about the Holy Spirit, when he comes in to dwell with us, he will teach us. That's greater than any man can do. Now, the Holy Spirit will use men as vessels to teach us. But the foundation in those vessels is the Holy Spirit if it's a right holy teaching. And why do you want to learn the statutes according to the mercy? To know how to attain mercy. Because you're not going to get mercy if you don't do right. You're not going to get mercy if you're, if you're sinning. So you need to know how to live before God. You need God to show you how to live and what to do. Then you attain mercy. I am thy servant. Nobody understands that word today because servant has been made as a bad word in reference to, you know, slavery. But a servant is one that serves. And there are people out there, oh Lord, I am thy servant, and they don't do nothing. For God. They'll call the Lord the God the Lord, and He's not the Lord of their life. A servant is a man or woman that is called any time to do anything that the Lord requires them. And they do it. Jesus gives the illustration of, of a of a man who has a servant. And the servant's been working in the field all day. And he comes in from the field. And what's he say? You know, does the master tell him, oh, sit down and have a dinner? No, the master says, hey, where's my dinner? And the servant goes and gets the master's dinner, even though he's been working all day, and takes care of the master. You're not a servant if you just go to church one day a week. Or even half a day a week. You're not even a servant if you go twice a week. And that's it. You're not even a servant if you go to church three times a week and then you don't do nothing still after that. Church is your benefit. Church is for you to learn. Church is for you to talk to the brother. Church is for you to learn to pray for others or for others to pray for you. A servant is outside of church, on the job, on the street, handing uh, the money in a gospel tract to a cashier. Reading your Bible. Prayer. Doing what God tells you to do. That is a servant. And give me understanding. Understanding to do what you want me to do and how to do it. And in reference to you, Lord. That I may know thy testimonies. And when you do something for the Lord, and then how you can go tell others the testimony of what the Lord has done in your life. <laughs> Jesus one time with, with the twelve disciples ungirded himself and began to wash the disciples' feet. He became a servant. He humbled himself. And did a, uh, a nasty kind of job. Cleaning someone else's feet. How far did he clean his feet? You ever ask yourself? 
Okay, it's done. No. The Lord Jesus Christ, to show that example, I guarantee he cleaned the feet. He just didn't do a dust off. He cleaned the feet enough that the feet were clean and moved on to the next. And servants did that job. Remember when he turned the water into wine and they, they, they were, they were uh, the pots there using for the, the feet washing? A servant that humbles himself, bows down to do a job for the one he's serving. Doing service to the Lord requires bowing down. It may be a dirty job. It is thine. It is time for the Lord. It is time for the Lord to work. Wow. Man telling God it's time to go to work. For they have made void thy law. Hmm. Lord, it's time for thee to work. For your church has made void the word. The work. You think that's a good thing he's asking the Lord to do? You think the Lord will say, wipe is okay. I think, let's see, it's time for me to go to work, go and buy that. All right, I think I'll give everyone gifts and give them, I'll give them money over here. And I'll give them blessings over here. I, I don't think so. And they had made void the law. You know what God did to the nation of Israel for not doing what the law said? You know the law said for the Jews that every seven years they were to give the land rest, the trees, the animals. On the eighth year they were to eat the old store. Do you know that is one of the reasons God gives why he sent them to Babylon? Because they didn't give the land rest? Having Nebuchadnezzar come three times to besiege the city of Jerusalem and carry them off to Babylon was a result from making void the law. Manasseh, the longest reigning king in Judah, made void the law, and look what God did to him. The writer of 126 is calling upon God to judge and justice 121. See, not all our prayers are to be sweet and lovely. Sometimes the best thing is to pray, God, judge him, because you're going to do right, you're holy, and I don't understand. And I've done that for some people, especially for salvation. And I've seen God do things in the person's life to say, wow. Yeah, but they became unconverted still. But I know the holy and righteous God that done right. When a guy was committing fornication in, in Corinth, Paul didn't slap him on the back. Say, out of boy. Paul turned him over to Satan. And that guy, in turn, in 2 Corinthians, repented and got right.
Sometimes you got to pray to God your worst fears for somebody you may love. Because maybe jail, maybe a hospital bed, maybe a wheelchair, maybe a loss, maybe a, a, a unbearable event in their life is the only way for them to get right. What was the result of Judah, uh, Judah and Jerusalem going into Babylon? Read Ezra and Nehemiah. People got right. Read about Daniel. People got right. And they went back into the land. And they rebuilt. And it kind of rebuilt by Herod. But that is the temple in Ezra and Nehemiah that Jesus walked into. And yet, they got sour. They forsook the law. Now get this, now get this. For it is time for it is time for thee, Lord, to work. For they have made void the, thy law. The Jew today is not following the law. They're supposed to believe on their Messiah, but they haven't. They still got themselves under the law. They take the lamb at the Passover and break the bone. That's not the law. There are three times a year that the law says they are to go to Jerusalem to the temple that's not there. And they don't. The Lord Jesus Christ is the means of salvation today for the Jew and Gentile, but for the Jew. What is the judgment and the sentence of the justice of God for the Jew today? Three and a half years of tribulation, three and a half years of great tribulation under the Antichrist. And what is the result of that? You may think it's so cruel that the Antichrist is going to behead Jews. He's going to kill. He's going to drink their blood. He is going to be worse than Adolf Hitler. And what is the result going to be? They're going to be down in the of Peter waiting for the Messiah to come in the second advent. And you would never have thought about killing people to get people right. But God knows better. I have dealt with men that God had to put into a room with four walls and a door that they could not open unless a uniformed man opened that door for them. And they didn't have the liberty to come to church, the church services, unless that uniformed person opened the door and allowed them. And there were times when, when church service was announced and they were not allowed to go. Their entire life had to be ruled by somebody than themselves. And yes, God may put somebody in a wheelchair. He may have them struck by light. And whatever it takes to get their attention. And when, when September 11th happened in America. And all the churches came to prayer. I remember that. I remember we went to church the next day. Uh, ne yeah, the next day. And the, at night, we went for church service to pray. And then the following day, nothing happened. Weren't sincere. Weren't truly seeking God. Pride in America. Pride in the red, white, and blue. Pride in the fire departments. Pride in everything. And our enemies, those that are against God, they're not so bad. They're nice people. Let them in the public school system with their mask and take God of the Bible out in his prayer. And you wait to see what God's going to have more for this country. Because they made void the law and the word. Read first. Second Chronicles, first, second Kings, first, second Samuel, 
judges. We'll give you a wonderful story about those who did not do the law. Therefore, I love thy commandments above gold. Not just gold, yea, above fine gold, the best gold. And many do not. Whether you believe in tithing or just offering to the Lord, some don't. Some give more time to earning money than they do reading their Bible. Therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right. I judge everything by the Bible. And those things that are right, I esteem, I adhere to, and I hate every false way. But the Bible says it's wrong, I hate it. And we already read a verse. We are to hate evil. If the Bible says it's right, I'm to esteem it. If it says it's wrong, I'm to hate it. Separation. Separation, I have done judgment. You got to judge right and wrong in your life. And for surety of thy servant, God gives you deliverance when you do right. It's plain and simple. God of the Bible is the only God that not only will save you, but repair, repentfully and and. And coming to him in judgment upon your sins of guilt, he'll continue to love you and forgive you and have long suffering. Deliverance. And then when this life is done, whether rapture or death, Doing what God tells you to do, he'll bring you home to glory. And it's sorry that the Bible says few, few. There's a verse in the New Testament that says, Christ, I believe it is, I may get this wrong, Christ, for many, uh, it says many, it doesn't say all. Christ died for all, but not all will receive it. And that's what we talked about last night, the wicked. <coughs> Tonight we're talking about the saved. Your separation and your deliverance. And yes, the judgment in your life may be sins, people, places, what you do, why you do it. You turn your whole life into right and wrong. And as a result, 128, therefore I esteem all, the, all thy precepts concerning all things to be right. Everything that is right in your life, you... Judge, separation, I hate every false way. God is going to judge us for what is right that we did in our life and what is wrong that we avoided. You're in trouble is when you switch, you call evil good and good evil. You say, how do I do that? You find something that's right. And you don't do it. You will be judged guilty. 
You find something that's false. And yet you do that. You'll be judged guilty. You are to do what is right is right. And you are not to do what is wrong. That is wrong. Plain and simple. How more technical can you get? I wonder when all is done at the judgment seat of Christ. If you were to gather all the ashes up, I wonder how many ashes there would be. On a balance of how many crowns were actually won. Who would what would weigh out more, the crowns or the ashes? Let's let's take my eyes off everybody. Forget I said that. Judge not least, he be judge. Okay. In the life of Stiley Hayward, if you were to put on a balance beam all my ashes that I lost. And weigh it with all the crowns that I'm going to win if I win any. What's going to weigh more? See, all that I do for Christ will last. All that is done not for Christ won't last. Is my will my life be weighed in a balance as? I've done more for self than Christ. The ashes weigh, outweighs the, the crown. Now you think about that with your life. Therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right. And I hate every false way. You gotta find out what is right. And you gotta find out what is false. You gotta try the spirits, the Bible says. You're gonna seek those things that are pure, the Bible says. In every, every, every aspect of your life. Every, because everything will be judged, and the deliverance comes for <coughs> I have done judgment and justice. I have found in my life what things that are right, and I am doing them. Can you say that? And every, and I hate every false way. The things that I'm doing, and the things that are wrong in my life, I am not doing. Can you say that? And if you can say no, which I can say no, because I am not perfect. I am a sinner saved under grace, and I have not fulfilled 128. The deliverance I need is 1 John 1, 9. I need the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ to cleanse me, because I am not obeying 128. So I need to run back to 121. I need to judge myself. And I need the blood atonement, 122, the surety of God. I am so tired of this sick body of mine and sin and the anger and the impatience and all that. I want the Lord Jesus Christ to come back, 123. And Lord, until, the, until you come back, I am having problem with people. I am having all kinds of problems. I need mercy, 124. Teach me, Lord, please. Help me. Lord, I am your servant until you come. I want to do right. I need understanding of what is right and wrong. Because I may be doing something I think is right and it may be wrong. I haven't been shown yet. You know what I'm finding out as, as I grow on as a Christian? I am more vile than I ever thought I was. I'm worse as I get more into the Bible and Bible preaching. I am worse. I'm not getting better. It is time for thee, Lord, to work. 
But they have made void thy law. Lord, I need you. So I need your Savior. I need the Lord Jesus Christ. I need the blood. I need you to teach me, Lord. I may need a spanking. That's hard to ask for. What child comes up to the father, pulls his pants down, and says, I've been bad. I'm guilty. And we are all guilty. And then I will love thy commandments and better than gold. And I'll go back into my life and see what is right and see what is wrong. And I'll do 121, 122, 123, 124, 125, 126, 127 over again and come back onto 128. And Monday I'll do 121, 122, 123, 124, 125, 126, 127. Tuesday, 121, 122, 123, 124, 125, 126, 127. I'll judge my life again. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I go through these verses over and over daily in my life. Because my life was not the same today as it was yesterday. I may not have done the same sins. I may have and had added sins. I may have not done the sins I had done yesterday. If it's under the blood of Lord Jesus Christ, I don't need to plead the blood from yesterday. i got to find out today what I've done wrong. And if tomorrow comes by the mercy of God, you start off with, with 121 and work your way down again. Every single day of our life. And if you can complete 121 to 128 with perfection, then you have equaled yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ. If somebody comes up to you and says, oh, I'm perfect, 121 to 128, you can do that. Never told a lie. Never done a false thing. Never done wrong. Just eight verses. There's much meat in there. Or you can be the wicked man of last night's study. And you don't want to be judged by God as a wicked man. Because there is no hope. In a wicked man. There is no reward for the wicked man. Salvation's plan is just a fairy tale, but their lies don't change the truth that Jesus died for you, and the word says his reason. 